This video brought to you by Gamefly. Go to GameflyOffer.com slash HaloCanon for a 30-day free trial. Stick around to the end for more details. The Spartans. In many ways, they're the very core of the Halo universe, both from a narrative perspective and an in-universe one. The creation of the Spartan Twos was the central focus of Halo's first novel, and few books or even comics don't at least feature a Spartan if not revolving around one or more. And of course, short of Halo 3 ODST, we have always played as Spartans in the games. However, despite all this exposure and exploration, there are many mysteries that surround the Spartans and their various classes, especially among those not well versed in the lore. Today, I aim to fix that with an overview of all known Spartan and Super Soldier programs in the Halo universe. The earliest sort of super soldier program began during the interplanetary wars of the 22nd century, during which organizations attempted to generate tougher, stronger, and faster soldiers. These early attempts were largely fruitless. By the 23rd century, the UNSC had begun developing bioengineering protocols and experimenting with biochemically enhanced soldiers. Codenamed Orion, named for the Orion arm of the Milky Way, this early program selected and tested five candidates. Unfortunately, these early augmentations were declared ineffective, and the five test subjects reintegrated into the UNSC military. All five died within a year of the tests, for reasons known only to Oni. It wasn't until the 25th century that Orion would be launched again, just as the early seeds of the insurrection began to take hold. On January 29th, 2491, the Orion Project formally launched with 65 test subjects. These subjects were successfully augmented, and after completing their training, an additional 100 volunteers were accepted into the program. Orion augmentations are known to have included muscular enhancement injections, pulmonary respiratory enhancements, retina inversion injections, and cochlea enhancement tuning. On January 12, 2496, the first Orion operation was successfully launched as part of Operation Charlemagne. A full unit of Orion soldiers were deployed to recover a suborbital transit station over Eridanus II, which they did without casualty or detection. More operations would follow in the next 10 years, though Charlemagne marked the only time a full unit would be deployed. Rumors and conspiracy theories about secret super soldiers also began to spread among the outer colonies as a result of Orion. The program continued to expand as the insurrection grew stronger and bolder, with a full 300 Orion candidates being augmented by the program's peak. Unfortunately, older candidates began to show side effects, both physical and mental, that only worsened with time. There were also some that had secret insurrectionist sympathies, refusing to participate after augmentations. With all the shortcomings and degradation of the candidates, the program was quietly shut down in 2506. The 165 surviving candidates were reassigned to other Spec Op units throughout the UNSC. However, the aforementioned side effects would continue to worsen for some, and a number of former Orion soldiers were discharged due to mental instabilities. To keep Orion's secret, these side effects would be attributed to Boron Syndrome. Despite all of this, some former Orion candidates, such as Sergeant Avery Johnson, were able to remain in active service for much longer than the average soldier. Other known Orion candidates include James Lee, who later changed his surname to James, Gilly, who would eventually have a child with James, Gladys Wilson, and Morales, who had a son. Orion would have a lasting impact, such as with the UNSC using Orion operators as models for the reorganization of the ODSTs in the years following the program's shutdown. However, the biggest impact would be on the future iteration of the program. Orion 2 began around 2510, as Oni started reviewing what were known as the Carver Findings, a series of theories predicting massive civil conflict in the colonies unless forcibly stabilized. When a young Dr. Catherine Halsey re-examined the findings, predicting an even more grim future for humanity, Oni went to work initiating their next super soldier program with the aforementioned Doctor as its lead. Under Dr. Halsey, the program took a radical shift. Rather than adult volunteers, they'd use six-year-old children. Children, unlike adults, could be easily indoctrinated. By choosing candidates from a select gene pool, Halsey ensured only the best of the best. And of course, their young bodies would be more adaptable to augmentation. In addition to distance her program from the failings of Orion, Halsey renamed it Spartan II, the two used to at least honor the sacrifices of those that came before. Oni approved the program, and Halsey began searching for her candidates. By 2517, she had identified 150 potential candidates. Budget cuts, however, forced her to reduce that number to 75. Halsey, aided by Oni teams, would observe the subjects and decide which ones to conscript. 
In late September of 2511, 75 children across human space were secretly abducted, replaced with rapidly grown clones, and transported to reach humanity's military powerhouse second only to Earth. For the next eight years, the 75 children would be trained physically and mentally for war. Physical training, military history, tactics and strategy, and more. In March of 2525, the candidates entered the second phase of the program, augmentation. This new generation of Spartans received a wide variety of risky and invasive surgeries to enhance their natural abilities. These included occipital capillary reversal to enhance their vision, even in the dark, carbide ceramic ossification, coating the bones with a carbide ceramic, making them virtually unbreakable, a catalyst thyroid implant, which released a growth hormone to boost skeletal and muscle tissue growth, muscle tissue enhancement injections to increase muscle density, and superconducting fibrification of neural dendrites, resulting in a 300% increase in reflexes. Unfortunately, there were side effects. Of the 75 candidates, only 33 survived intact. 12 were severely crippled and another 30 killed. A mock funeral was held for the dead, who were secretly put on ice until such a time that they could be resuscitated, perhaps even deployed as proper Spartans. It is known that a few Spartans were revived and deployed, among them Jerome 092, Alice 130, and Douglas 042. Following the funeral and rehabilitation, the Spartan twos would eventually be deployed on their first mission, capturing an insurrectionist leader. The mission was a success. However, upon returning, they were briefed on the fall of Harvest and first contact with the hostile alien hegemony known as the Covenant. By November of 2525, the Spartans would receive their new Mjolnir Mark IV armor. The armor provided incredible protection while also further augmenting their speed, strength, and reaction time. Spartans would be deployed against insurrectionist targets and Covenant forces, the latter more and more as the Covenant kept advancing. In August of 2552, the 25 surviving Spartan twos were recalled to Reach for Operation Red Flag, a mission to kidnap Covenant leadership and force a peace. The Spartans were outfitted with the latest line of Mjolnir, Mark V, which featured a number of upgrades, most notably energy shields. The leader of the Spartan twos, Master Chief Petty Officer John 117, was also given the smart AI Cortana, who would help them on their mission. Unfortunately, before Red Flag could be initiated, the Covenant showed up at Reach. The Spartans were deployed to help in the battle, but most would die in Reach's defense. By the end of the Covenant War, just months later, only a handful of Spartan II personnel were known to be alive, though more, once thought dead or missing, would show up in the years following the war. After the graduation of the Spartan Twos in 2525, a second class was planned. However, due to the Covenant War diverting funds and a reduced pool of ideal candidates, it was shut down. In 2531, however, Colonel James Ackerson proposed his Spartan III program to Oni. Building off the work started by Dr. Halsey, the Spartan III program would widen the strict age and gene pool, taking orphan children rather than kidnapping them from their homes, and use a series of safer, though just as effective, chemical augmentations. The biggest change, however, would be the armor used. The biggest ongoing cost of the Spartan II program was the development and maintenance of Mjolnir, a single suit costing almost as much as a destroyer. Spartan Threes would instead be equipped with the less powerful and sophisticated Semi-Powered Infiltration Armor, or SPY. SPY featured photoreactive panels to camouflage users and limited ability enhancement. The armor plating was also notably weaker than Mjolnir, but SPY overall was better than the armor given to most UNSC forces. To lead this new program, a Spartan II, Kurt 051, was secretly abducted. Given the new name Kurt Ambrose and the rank of Lieutenant, he would train the next generation of Spartans on the secret world of Onyx. In December of 2531, Alpha Company began their training with a pool of 497 candidates, though only 300 were ultimately allowed to join. The class was augmented in November of 2536, their augmentations including a carbide ceramic ossification catalyst to make their bones nearly unbreakable and allow them to survive harder impacts, a fibroid muscular protein complex to increase muscle density, a retina inversion stabilizer to improve eyesight even in the dark, and an improved colloidal neural disunification solution to decrease reaction time by 300%. Alpha Company were successfully deployed on numerous missions in the months following their augmentations. However, the entire company, save for those who had been pulled aside for special teams, were wiped out during Operation Prometheus, a mission to destroy a Covenant shipyard. Two years later, in 2539, 418 candidates were conscripted to form Beta Company. Once again, only 300 were ultimately selected. Beta Company was given the same set of augmentation injections sometime prior to May of 2554 and equipped with Spy Mark II, which featured a number of minor upgrades. 
Like Alpha Company before them, Beta successfully took on a number of missions and, once again, were mostly wiped out in a massive suicide mission, Operation Torpedo. Torpedo was enacted on July 3rd, 2545, in order to take out a Covenant Deuterium slash Tritium refinery on Pegasi Delta. While a few Spartans were successfully pulled from the company for special missions, all but two deployed for Operation Torpedo were wiped out. The survivors were Tom B-292 and Lucy B-091. Tom and Lucy would go on to help train the next company of Spartans, Gamma, which was approved in July of 2544 and started not long after. Gamma was made up of 330 candidates, all of which were allowed to join the program. When augmented, Kurt, motivated by the grief of losing two previous companies of Spartans, secretly added a few extra, illegal, augmentations. A neural-altering, non-carcinogenic mutagen that enhanced the aggressive response of an individual during times of stress. This drug also had a depressing side effect on the higher reasoning centers of the brain. Regular doses of cyclodexion-4, bipolar integration, and mesoolanzapine drugs, or smoothers as they came to be called, would need to be taken to counter these side effects. By October of 2552, most of Gamma Company had been deployed, with only a few remaining teams on Onyx to compete for top marks. Unfortunately, Forerunner Sentinels hidden deep within the planet came alive, responding to a signal from the recently destroyed Installation 04. The Spartan 3s began a fight for survival, eventually ending up in a hidden shield world, the entrance for which was kept at Onyx's core. The survivors were recovered in February of 2553. The Spartan 3 program was in many ways similar, but in more ways distinct from its predecessor. While the 2s had been created to quell human rebellion, the 3s were created to take on the Covenant, meant as disposable fodder, trading lives for time. The Spartan 3 program also saw the birth of a number of specialized teams. First were the Headhunters, either lone wolf operatives or two-man teams called a Binary. They would be pulled from regular service after surviving two or more specially assigned missions and receive additional training. Once done, Headhunters were sent deep behind enemy lines against specific targets, often with the expectation that they wouldn't return. The Headhunter program would continue with the Spartan IV program after the war, though with a few minor alterations. Another type of team born from the Spartan III program were combat fire teams, such as Noble Team. These were Spartans pulled from normal ranks or the Headhunter program and outfitted with Mjolnir armor. Along with Noble Team, three other Mjolnir-clad Spartan III teams were known to exist. Gauntlet, Red, and Echo. Following the Covenant War, the surviving Spartan personnel were given the chance to join the newest iteration of the program, Spartan IV. The Spartan IV program began around September of 2552 under the leadership of the Spartan II washout Musa 096 and approved by Oni head Margaret Perengoski. Spartan IV would return to its Orion roots, taking adult volunteers from military service and augmenting them. The first iteration of the program would attempt to create Spartans that wouldn't need Mjolnir, who were as strong and capable as any previously fully outfitted Spartan class. Unfortunately, nine of the ten test subjects died, with the tenth, Ilsa Zane, going insane. Following that, Oni reverted to something more akin to the twos and threes, using augmentations to enhance individuals and outfitting them with Mjolnir armor. Known Spartan IV augmentations include Torpid Data Cluster Installation, a specialized neural implant capable of interfacing with an AI, Muscular and Skeletal Engineering, Enhancing Bone Length and Strength, Reinforcing the Joints, and Muscle Enhancement, a series of neurological enhancements to decrease reaction time, Organ Implantation, Replacing or Enhancing nearly every organ in the body. This included replacing lungs, enhancing their ability to intake oxygen and allow them to process airborne toxins and foreign gas mixtures, a pancreas replacement, and corneal implants to increase eyesight and night vision capability. Circulatory and metabolic improvement, allowing blood to circulate better and for subjects to heal from wounds faster. It also allowed them to absorb more nutrients from food. Gene therapy, in which the telomeres were lengthened, giving the Spartans a longer life and operational time and several other augmentations and implantations, including biomonitoring implants, locator beacons, and more. Following augmentation, Spartan IVs were certainly among the most capable soldiers, but did fall short of twos and threes. To compensate, Mjolnir Gen 2, developed alongside the Spartan IV program, featured new technology to bridge the gap between the IVs and previous Spartan generations. In short, a Spartan IV and Gen 2 Mjolnir could fight on par with a Spartan II or III in Gen 1, barring combat experience. Spartan IVs also received additional training following augmentations, having to earn their armor before being deployed as proper Spartans. The first class of Spartan IVs graduated in January of 2553 with 145 members, with more to come in the years to follow. By 2557, the flagship of the UNSC, the Infinity, regularly had anywhere from 300 to 500 Spartans on board at any given time, with several more spread across UNSC space. 
When not on missions, Spartan Force would often train with one another in Wargame Simulator's A State of the Art Combat Deck. The Spartan 4 program marked several departures from past programs, including separation from any main UNSC branch. The Spartan 2s worked as part of the Navy, the 3s as Navy and Army, but the 4s had their own branch, the Spartan branch. And that covers all Spartan slash Super Soldier programs the UNSC has launched over the centuries. I obviously couldn't cover all the details and nuance of each program, but I hope this gives you an idea of what each program was about and why they were created. What did you think of the video, and what do you think of each Spartan program? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching as always, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Thanks for watching. Also consider checking out Gamefly, with over 8,000 new releases and classic games for current and previous gen consoles, and even some older consoles. Gamefly is a great way to try tons of games without buying them. Go to GameflyOffer.com slash Halo Cannon to start your 30-day free trial.